If you go on safari in Africa, you above all hope to see five animals, such as this nice lion. And in the same way, there are five things in your life that you want to experience or accomplish in order to have a fulfilled and successful life. At least that's what John Strelicky says in his novel The Big Five for Life. And today we're going to take a look at that. Welcome to the Soft Skill Channel. My name is Sebastian Jung and today I've got another book review for you. We are taking a look at another book by John Strelicky. A while ago I already presented to you his first book, The Y Cafe, and this time we'll take a look at The Big Five for Life. Both are very popular books by Strelicky. Strelicky is altogether very popular, very successful, especially in Germany. In Germany several of his books are permanently in several bestseller lists, so he is really well liked, really popular. Um, Strelicky writes guidebook, uh, guidebooks, self-help books, but he writes them as fiction, as stories, and this seems to be quite appealing. The Big Five for Life are his third book, and it was published in 2008. And the interesting thing about this book is that here, Strelecki took the concepts from his two earlier books, The Y Cafe and Life Safari, and he applied them to the area of management and leadership. The protagonist of the book is one Joe Pocretti. It is Joe, by the way, not John, so it's a different person than in The Y Cafe. Uh, but the main person in this book is Thomas Deral. He is the greatest leader in the world. And the book is basically about him. He is Joe's superior and Joe's friend. And throughout the book we learn about him, get to know him and learn about his leadership philosophy. At the very beginning of the book, Joe is on a vacation in Spain when he learns that Thomas is severely ill. He immediately returns to the United States and on the plane he meets Sonia, who is sitting next to him and he tells her a lot about Thomas in flashbacks and in explanations and he shows her a video of Thomas and so on. And this is pretty much how the book works. The plot always remains very simple and its main objective is to set up a stage to showcase Thomas's leadership philosophies. And there is plenty of that. There is way more material than in The Y Cafe. And it is also altogether a bigger book. The Y Cafe had about 100 pages and here we have about 250. Now obviously I won't be able to showcase all of these concepts and ideas in this video. I will just pick a few favorites. Now back to Joe. Now obviously he arrives in the USA at some point and he meets Thomas and his wife Maggie and there are conversations, further explanations and uh, in the reminder of the book there are three main events. First there is a big event in one of Thomas's companies that is attended by Thomas and by Joe and he also invites Sonia and they spend a couple of chapters. Then there is a TV show Thomas is invited to as a guest and he is interviewed and he speaks about his leadership philosophy again and this also spans a couple of chapters. And finally the last big event in the book is a kind of surprise party that is created for Thomas by his friends and family and all his fans, all the employees who love him and they open a museum they have created in one of Thomas's companies that is about his life. This may seem a bit strange now, but it will make more sense in a moment when we proceed to the concepts. And after this surprise party and the opening of the museum, a few days later, Thomas dies. 
in the epilogue of the book, Joe receives a manuscript, a book Thomas had written about his life, about his philosophies, and this is probably a small hint about a future book of Strelecky. However, there is also quite a specific hint about another book by Strelecky, because right after the epilogue of The Big Five for Life, um, it, uh, without any, any gap, it continues with a reading sample of the sequel Big Five for Life continued. Um, this was quite a, quite a smart move uh, in regard to advertising. Oh, I, I like this. And at the very end of the book, there is also a chapter, Thomas Durrell Takeaways, where some of Thomas's ideas and philosophies are repeated and summed up. And we will have a look at some of those um, ideas now. The first concept that is discussed in detail in the book is the museum of your life. When Joe meets Thomas for the first time, Thomas asks him, is this a good museum stay morning? And this strange question is about um, a mind game that Thomas came up with. We are to imagine that after our death, a museum is created to showcase our lives with uh, big pictures and videos and uh, stories and artifacts, and it will showcase our life as it actually happened, not uh, wishful thinking or ideals. So if we spend most of our lives at a job we totally hated, our museum will be uh, full of big giant pictures of us unhappily sitting at our desks and waiting for work to be over. And if we always said, oh, my family is most important to me, my wife or my husband and my children, but we actually spend very little time with them, then they will only appear in the museum with small pictures in the edges, while all of the big space will be taken up by us being unhappy at work. And I think this is a nice idea to deal with the questions, what is really important to me in my life and which things do I actually spend most of my time and effort on. And I think for that it's quite helpful and um, I, I like this idea. And it is also quite a tangible and specific concept, which unfortunately can be said about all of Strelicky's ideas. Next. Let's have a look at the titular Big Five. Here we are actually dealing with two concepts from um, Strelecki's two previous books. From the Y Cafe, we have the purpose of existence. That is about what's really important in our life. That's uh, some kind of overarching topic for our lives. And we should pursue our purpose for existence in order to have a happier life. The concept remains pretty vague in the Y Cafe and I'm afraid it's not getting much better here. Then we have the Big Five from Strelicky's second book, Life Safari. In this, uh, this book is about a young man who travels through Africa and who meets a wise uh, African woman and the woman tells him about the Big Five. If people are going on a safari, they want to see a lot of interesting, exciting animals. And above all, they hope to see five animals. Lion, leopard, rhinoceros, elephant and African buffalo. And if you see all of those, then your safari was a complete and astonishing success. And in the same way, the wise woman asks the young man to, to wonder, what are the five things in my life that I would have to experience or accomplish so on my deathbed I can say, oh, this was all a great success. I did everything that was really important to me. I think this is a nice addition to the purpose for existence because the purpose for existence is more of a big and overarching general concept and the big five are more specific and smaller goals and you can work towards them more specifically and you can actually complete and fulfill them. One important hint at this point 
Um, the term Big Five also appears in personality psychology. There, Big Five refers to five personality traits that are especially well known, well researched, well understood and that appear in pretty much every personality questionnaire. Those are extroversion, agreeableness, openness to experience, conscientiousness and neuroticism. And this has absolutely nothing to do with Africa or Australia. It's uh, something entirely different, but the same term Big Five appears there, so keep that in mind. Back to our book and to Australia. As I already mentioned, Strelicki took his concepts of Purpose for Existence and Big Five and he applied them to management and leadership in this book. And the first thing that is important here is that a company also has a Purpose for Existence and it also has Big Five. <clears throat> and the super important thing is that the purpose for existence and big five of the company and the purpose for existence and big five of the employees, they need to match, they need to complement each other in some way. <clears throat> Sorry, because if you achieve that, people won't just unhappily work for the money, but they will be really enthusiastic and productive because by doing what they do, they will pursue their own purpose for existence, they will fulfill their own big five and at the same time work towards the purpose for existence and big five of the company. Now, this sounds nice and if this um, is established, they also won't just be mere employees, they will be fellow travelers on the road to success. And um, Joe explains why this is, um, Joe, Joe gives good reasons for that. He explains that a company will be way more profitable if the people are really encouraged and motivated and if they are productive and that a company is way more productive if there is a low turnover rate. So if people aren't quitting all the time because this generates a lot of additional problems and costs. However, what we are not told is how this actually is supposed to work, how we can create this match and um, what we need to do to, to make it work. This all remains very vague, but at least we get two examples for uh, in regard to the big five. First of all, there is Joe. Joe tells his purpose for existence and big five to Sonia. Uh, now, what is Joe's job exactly? Now, we don't get to know exactly, but we get to know that he is holding presentations and talks and he is writing books and articles. So he seems to be some kind of trainer and author. We don't get to know his exact job title and we don't know what his company actually does. Um, but well, let's have a look at Purpose for Existence and Big Five. Joe's Purpose for Existence is to experience everything I want in life so I can live without regretting anything. At this point, I felt a bit fooled because this basically, he, he basically says, I want to fulfill my Big Five. His Purpose for Existence doesn't have any own relevance or content. Well, let's have a look at the Big Five. Write a song that breaks the top 10 of the pop charts. Well, I don't think the company will care a lot about that. Speak Spanish fluently. This seems to be more useful um, at least once he has learned to actually do it. Travel the world for at least six months per year. Now this would be interesting if his job uh, would include extensive and frequent business trips, but this doesn't seem to be the case. Joe's travels seem to be vacations. So basically what you have here is he says, I will only attend work about half the year, but I still need to get paid uh, enough 
that I can afford this and that I can afford to, to travel the other half of the year. So there is little benefit for the company here, but there are pretty big expectations. Then we have exercise my mind and body daily, so I'm always growing. This sounds positive, this could be more useful for the company, even though we don't get to know which direction Joe wants to grow and develop and if this will be of any use to the company. So I guess it all rests with the final point and that one is inspire people through my writings, presentations and by being who I am. Make a difference. Now this sounds positive and it is more specific because specific activities are mentioned. Writings and presentations. So there seems to be more tangible benefit for the company, but even here it still remains vague. What I would really like to know is what the purpose for existence and Big Five of the company are and how they fit together, but Streliki does not tell us. At least we get another uh, example. And there um, we get to know a bit about how it matches. It's about Emily. Emily works at the reception of one of Thomas's companies and this is a position he holds in high regard. He calls it director of first impressions. Emily once read an article written by Thomas and she was impressed and she wrote him a letter, told him about her purpose for existence and Big Five and they met and in the end she got a job and so on. We hear this story from Joe, who unfortunately doesn't remember all the details. He doesn't tell us her purpose for existence and he only recalls three of her five Big Five for life. Those are make people happy. This is realized by working at the reception because she can greet um, visitors and make sure they have a good time and have a good impression of the company. Enabling her granddaughter to go to college. This is realized using the salary from her job. So this idea of I use the money to buy what I actually want, this seems to be legitimate here. And finally, keep her granddaughter safe every day. And this she realized by getting together with Thomas and the CEO of that specific company and by creating an internal childcare. So uh, her granddaughter could stay in this childcare after school where she is safe and taken care of. Now these uh, examples are more helpful than Joe because here we actually learn a bit about how it fits the needs of the company and where the benefit for the company is. At, at least in the first one the, there is benefit for the company, for the others it's, it's still a bit vague. But uh, here again, we don't get to know what the company actually does and we don't get to know the company's purpose for existence or Big Five. So everything still remains vague. Furthermore, at this point, you might get the impression that there always is a match, that you can always come up with some explanation for why something complements and why things work out. But this is not the case. On multiple occasions, Thomas emphasizes that there are people where things don't match and people who are pretty much useless and you need to make sure to not recruit them and to fire them if you did by accident. And I wonder what would such a situation look like? Um, what would be an example for a case where things don't match? But we don't get to know. Now the way I imagine it is as follows. Let's say you work at a toilet lid manufacturer. Important everyday product. And the CEO, of, the CEO of your company says, oh, I read this exciting book, The Big Five for Life by John Strelecki. I am totally impressed and inspired and we will do it like this in our company as well. So please write down your purpose for existence and your Big Five for Life. And then we will see if it makes sense to continue employing you or if we will have to let you go. So you sit at your desk and you wonder what is important in your life. And what you come up with is maybe something like purpose for existence, be a good father and husband or mother and wife and big five, 
travel to South America, learn a musical instrument, write a novel, spend time with my kids every day, enjoy every day to its fullest. And after you've written this, you think, oh well, if I hand this in, I might as well clean my desk right now, because they will probably fire me. So you rephrase it a bit. For example, purpose for existence, make sure people are comfortable on the toilet, something like this. But you need to be very careful, because Thomas emphasizes that sometimes people will try to trick you and will try to fake their big five and write what you want to hear, but he says it's easy to uncover them, because it will show in their productivity. I think this would probably work like this. You go to your superior and say, uh, next week my little daughter has her birthday, can I leave early so I can celebrate with her? And he uh, takes out this piece of paper with your purpose for existence and big five and he reads and says, uh, I don't see anything about a daughter here. Did you lie in your purpose for existence and big five? Do we need to let you go? And you say, oh, no, 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 this was a total misunderstanding. Oh, this was a stupid idea. Forget about it. I will do lots of overtime as usual to uh, show you my, um, show you how enthusiastic I am about the toilet. And this is, of course, rather grim and uh, creepy and dystopian, but this is pretty much how um, how I think it would turn out if I go by what Strelicky tells us, and he doesn't really give us any further explanations. And as you see, this whole flabbiness and being vague and not giving specific and complete examples um, in the Y Cafe, this was not as bad, because there it was about something personal, something you dealt with by yourself. But here, this whole concept of purpose for existence and Big Five is supposed to be the foundation of the relationship between employer and employee. And here, things need to be way more specific. We need to know how to get it right and how uh, what, what we need to do so we get this uh, um, good version where everyone is happy and not the dystopian version that is grim and dark. In close connection with the purpose for existence and Big Five, there is another concept I'd like to mention briefly, because it is emphasized a lot in the book, and this is the ascending life curve. Thomas says, most lives look like this. Um, from left to right, we have time. Up and down is how happy we are. So we have ups and downs, better times and worse times. But um, Overall, it is about the same throughout our life. And he says what we want instead is an ascending life curve, where things get better over time, where we get more happy over time, where our highs and our lows get uh, higher. So at some point, our lows are higher than what used to be our highs. And uh, this is... and. Um, we achieve this, it seems, by pursuing our purpose for existence and Big Five, no further explanation is given. And this is emphasized in the book after Thomas talks about the ascending life curve in the TV show. Sonia calls Joe and says, oh, it all falls into place now, it all makes sense now. Ascending life curve, now I understand. Everything Thomas does is to make sure his people have an ascending life curve. So, uh, it is regarded as quite important. From my point of view, it is a rather simple concept that, concept that lacks substance and um, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. <clears throat> For starters, as far as I know, and I'm afraid I couldn't find the book I read this in, I couldn't find an alternative so uh, source on the fly, but as far as I know, the... Um, 
Our basic, basic amount of happiness is something that is specific to each individual, but that remains pretty much the same throughout our life. As Thomas said, we have highs, we have lows, however, they um, are based on some basic uh, value, on some average happiness that remains pretty much the same throughout our life. So the idea that we could be much happier in a couple of years than we are now pretty much contradicts the current uh, research. And furthermore, um, this concept is pretty weird and strange in itself because, for example, um, in, in this story, in the book, Joe would have to say, oh, it is a bit sad that my dear friend Thomas is dying now, but because I have this awesome ascending life curve, I am still much happier about this than I was about this great vacation in my childhood, where at the time I thought, oh, this is the greatest thing ever in my entire life. And yeah, this is pretty strange and pretty weird. Finally, let's have a look at an example that specifically deals with management and leadership. At one point in the book, Joe reads an article um, written by Thomas titled How to Boost Profits in Four Simple Steps. Step one is find and strengthen your pillars. And your pillars are those five customers that contribute most to your profits. So make sure you take good care of those. Make sure they always get the best service because they are pretty much the foundation of your company. Step two is inventory your offerings. And you have to create a profit profitability map here. So this is a simple chart. On one side, you have all your offerings, starting from the most profitable one and continuing in descending order. And on the other axis, you have all your customers. Again, starting with the most profitable ones. So the five pillars come first and then in descending order. And then you have a nice matrix where you can cross out which customers use which products. And after you've done that, you will notice some gaps. And this is step three, attack the gaps. Find those gaps that are most profitable, where you can sell the most profitable product to the most profitable client and um, yeah, try to get them to, to buy it and continue in descending order. Step four, finally, is to learn from your lovers. On your profitability map, you can see which customers use the most of your products. And those are your biggest fans, your greatest lovers. They really like your company and you should find out why that is. Because it might be quite small things that make a difference. Maybe there's someone on the sales team who does an exceptionally good job for, for one customer and you could um, find out what he does and ask him, what do you do that works so well? And maybe this can be applied to other customers as well. I find this um, nice, tangible and specific concept. I guess big companies um, perform analysis that is way more complex than what Streleki proposes here, but I could be mistaken about that. I think what Streleki proposes makes sense and is uh, a nice and tangible concept. Finally, let's proceed to the critique. I already mentioned some points, some more I'd like to mention now. What I like about the book, about Streliki stories, is that they are loosely connected. For example, Thomas says at some point that he has a friend who runs a, a cafe in a totally forsaken place and that he once taught him about the purpose for existence. So there is a reference to the Y Cafe. And the Life Safari book, it exists um, as a book in this world. One of the characters has read it and was inspired by it. So there are links between the stories. They take place in a kind of shared universe. And I like that. Now, the biggest problem, as I mentioned before, is the flabbiness that Streleki 
uh, remains very vague about important key aspects of his philosophy. And this is especially problematic here, where he applies his methods to management and leadership. Here we would really need to know the details. Another thing I dislike in this context is that he wants to sort people out. First of all, I find this morally questionable because what, what kind of attitude would you need to, to do this? You'd probably have to say, oh, I, I'm, I'm probably fine. My purpose for existence and my big five are great and that some other people are sorted out. Well, those are probably people I wouldn't want to deal with anyway. And what kind of shitty attitude is that? And uh, furthermore, if you sort people out, you make it really easy for yourself. Let's take a simpler example. Let's say in your company there is a very bad mood and people are, um, uh, motivation is really low. Now, you could obviously figure out what the reasons are and start fixing problems and making improvements. And this is the right approach, but of course it means a lot of work and effort. But you could also, on the other hand, just fire everybody who makes any complaints, fire everybody who um, is unhappy, and this will teach the ones remaining that they should better put a smile on their faces. So here you make it really easy for yourself and this is pretty much what Streleki does. I much prefer Peter Drucker's approach because Drucker says in the effective executive that I uh, presented to you, universal genius is in short supply. We need to make do with the people we have. And finally, I think to create a good and healthy and productive relationship between employer and employee, which is what Streleki tries to do, it is very important to recognize and to accept that both parties have different goals and different motivations and that those different goals and motivations might clash sometimes, might uh, get in, into conflict sometimes and that you need to find ways to deal with that and need to find compromises and solutions. Um, what else is there? One thing I find a bit exhaustive about the book is the constant self-congratulation. Now, Thomas Durrell obviously presents Strelecki's ideas and philosophies and throughout the book, uh, Thomas is admired and laughed to an extent that is really exhaustive after a while. This specific edition is very nice. Nice book, good quality, um, the text is big enough, there is decent line spacing, easy to read, so this edition is perfectly fine. What I would like to have is an ascending like curve, so if you enjoyed the video, please consider clicking the like button. Have you read the book? If you did, maybe let me know in the comments if you enjoyed it and what you think about Strelecki's concepts. And if you didn't subscribe to the channel yet, I would be quite happy to have you as a subscriber. We will see each other next week in the next channel update. For today I take my leave. Have a nice day. See you next time.